Good evening aspirants. Welcome to daily editorial analysis of Shankar AS Academy. Today's date is 20th September 2024. Displayed here are the list of topics that we are going to discuss today. The first topic is Indus Water Treaty. The second one is Escalation in West Asia. In the first topic, we are going to discuss about the basics of Indus River and Indus Water Treaty. And the next one is Escalation in West Asia. In this article, we are going to discuss the conflict between Israel and Hezbollah group and what are the reasons behind it. We are going to discuss the impact on global level and also on India. So these are the two articles for this discussion. Let us get into the video. Now look at this article. It is about the escalation of situation in West Asia. See recently, Israel has detonated many pagers and walkie talkies in Lebanon to attack the Hezbollah members. Hezbollah was a terrorist organization situated in Lebanon. So this is the issue and this might create an involvement of USA and Iran into this conflict. So this is creating a global tension and escalation in West Asia. So in this backdrop, let us discuss about what is the conflict between Hezbollah and Israel and what are the impacts on and what are the impacts on global level and on India. This is what we are going to discuss in the video. Let us get into the discussion. See, Hezbollah was a Shia Muslim political and militant group and it is based in Lebanon. It was created in 1980s as a response to Israeli invention on Lebanon. Hezbollah has political wing and military wing. The political wing participates in Lebanese elections and military wing operates to attack Israel. This Hezbollah group was supported by Iran and Syria against Israel. Hezbollah group involves in anti-Israel stance, rocket attacks and guerrilla warfare. It is classified as terrorist organization by USA and Israel and many other countries. So this is a basic about Hezbollah. Look at the map. This is Lebanon and this is Israel. So Hezbollah group was situated in Lebanon. Recently, Israel has attacked the Hezbollah members by detonating their pagers and walkie-talkies. During 1980s, when Israel invaded Lebanon, Hezbollah group was created to attack Israel. So this Hezbollah group was backed by Iran and Syria. The main aim of Hezbollah group is to attack Israelis and to resist the Israeli occupation in Lebanon. During 2006 Lebanon war, this conflict was escalated. Now what are the global implications of this Israel Hezbollah conflict. The first one is geopolitical tensions. Since Hezbollah is backed by Iraq and Syria, there might be involvement of US in support of Israel. Since Saudi Arabia is against Iran, there might be indirect involvement of Saudi Arabia in this conflict. So, this might lead to proxy wars between Saudi Arabia and Iran. The next one is economic consequences. See, this geopolitical conflict might disrupt oil supply chains and fluctuations in price. This conflict in West Asia might disrupt oil supply chains and causes fluctuations in price of oil. It might also impact the global trade. The Strait of Hormuz which is present near this region and the Suez Canal is also present near the Lebanon and Syrian region. So this might affect the trade routes between Europe and Asia. Then about the security concerns, this conflict between Hezbollah and Israel might lead to rise in the extremist group and increased security threats. There might also be military inventions between Iran and Saudi Arabia. Obviously, there will be humanitarian crisis. Already, there was Syrian refugee crisis between 2011 and 2015. And now, these conflicts might increase this humanitarian crisis. Now, what might be the impact on India? First one is economic impact. Since the escalations in West Asia might affect the oil prices and create fluctuations in oil prices, it might affect India's economy and create inflation in oil prices. So India mostly depend on West Asia for oil. It might lead to economic impacts. The conflict in West Asia might also lead to trade imbalance between the West Asian nations and India. Then about the energy security, this conflict might impact India's energy supply chains. So India have to look for alternate energy resources. Another important challenge is migration diaspora. The Indian emigrants in West Asia might face challenges and it may also impact the remittances for India. See, the West Asian crisis is complex and multifaceted. It has impacts on global level and also on India. And this issue should be sorted out by United Nations in a peaceful manner. Now, what might be the solution for this issue? See, since this issue is complex and multifaceted, even mediation is necessary to resolve this issue. Hezbollah group might retaliate against Israeli occupation. So there might be a ceasefire agreement between both parties. Otherwise, this might lead to huge humanitarian crisis in future. So this is the main question regarding this topic. Interested aspirants can use it. With this, let us conclude the discussion and move to the next topic. Look at this article. It is about Indus Water Treaty. So India want to review and modify the Indus Water Treaty because there is a conflict with Pakistan regarding two hydropower projects. One is Kishan Ganga and another one is Rattle. India is using this hydropower projects to create renewable energy for its climate goals. 
Even the international rulings also supported India's stand to modify this Indus Water Treaty. But Pakistan is not accepting it. So in this backdrop, let us discuss about Indus Water Treaty and what are the basic things behind it. Now let us discuss about the basics of Indus River. Indus River originates in Tibetan Plateau in Manasarovar Lake which is near the Mount Kailash. Its length is about 3180 kilometers and it starts from Tibetan Plateau, flows through Tibet, India and Pakistan and then drains into Arabian Sea near Karachi. So this is the flow of Indus River. The left bank tributaries of Indus River are Sanskar, Suru, Shiok. The right bank tributaries are Jhelum, Chanab, Ravi, Bees and Sutlej. So the hydropower projects of India are Kishan Ganga which is on Jhelum River and Rattle which is on Chenab river. So, these two hydropower projects are in conflict with Pakistan and this is why India wanted to modify the Indus Water Treaty. According to Indus Water Treaty which was created in 1960, the six rivers of Indus Water are divided into two kinds, western rivers and eastern rivers. The western rivers are given to Pakistan and the eastern rivers are given to India. According to this treaty, the Indus, Jhelum and Chenab are considered as western rivers and Ravi, Bees and Sutlej are considered as eastern rivers. Even though these three rivers flow through India, India can have only restricted use in these three rivers. That means India can use these rivers for irrigation, hydropower projects etc. but it cannot use for constructing dams. But in these three rivers, India have unrestricted use. So this is the Indus Water Treaty. Now let us see the water allocation under Indus Water Treaty. See Pakistan receives almost 80% of Indus water. India has only limited use of western rivers. That is, it can use the western rivers only for non-conceptive use. Here the non-conceptive use means irrigation, navigation or power generation. That is hydropower projects. But it cannot build huge dams on these western rivers. Here the western rivers we have already seen. The three rivers are western rivers that is Indus, Jhelum and Chenab. But if you look at the conflicts of hydropower projects which we have seen in the news, Kishan Ganga and Rattle, this Kishan Ganga is on Jhelum river and Rattle is on Chenab river. But these hydropower projects are only runoff river hydropower projects. So these runoff river hydropower projects are actually allowed under this treaty. Here you have to understand what is runoff river hydropower project. See a hydropower project is normally constructed by using a dam. A dam is constructed and the water is stored and the water is released to produce hydropower. But here in the runoff river hydropower project, there is no construction of large dams. The runoff of water that is free flow of water is used to create hydropower. So these runoff river hydropower projects are actually allowed under this Indus Water Treaty as it does not affect the water flow to Pakistan. But now Pakistan is against this runoff river hydropower projects by India. The two projects Kishan Ganga and Rattle. Under this treaty, a permanent Indus Commission was established which monitors the implementation, resolving issues and exchanging information between two countries. If any of the country wanted to bring change in this treaty, it requires agreement from both parties. So there is no unilateral modification. And now India wants to modify the treaty but Pakistan is not agreeing to it. So this is a problem. As I have said earlier, the runoff hydropower projects of India that is Kishan Ganga and Ratle are receiving concerns from Pakistan. There is also lack of communication which hinders the dispute resolution. Pakistan is complaining about the flow of water in Indus. But there is also effect from climate change. The climate change impacts the river flow and complicates this water management. In addition to lack of communication, Pakistan is also reluctant to talk with India. So there is no bilateral agreement. See the Indus Water Treaty was created in 1960 and its need to be modified according to the current trends and the current water flow. So there is a need for modernization of this treaty. And there is also geopolitical tensions and this creates a tussle between the two countries to reach a consensus. So there is no cooperation on water issues. Due to trust deficit between India and Pakistan, this hinders the collaboration in resource management. So there is need for managing the hydroelectric power projects in Indus river and its tributaries. So the both countries have to collaborate in resource management. Now let us see the solutions. Obviously there should be a resumation. Obviously there should. Now let us see the solutions. First the two countries have to resume the dialogue and cooperate on these projects. The both countries must address the project disputes and strengthen communication via permanent Indus Commission. Then there should be third party mediation. India should use the neutral expert and World Bank mediation for sooner dispute resolution. Then there should be review and adapt treaty. There must be updation of provisions for climate change and changing water flows in Indus river. Since the treaty is outdated, since the treaty is outdated, there must be modification for climate change and recent change in water flows. 
The next important solution is shared energy project. India and Pakistan should collaborate on joint hydropower and renewable energy initiatives on Indus river and they should tap the energy of Indus river equally and more efficiently. Then about data sharing. There must be a real time data sharing between the two countries on the water flow in Indus. Climate change adaptation. Both countries must address the impacts jointly through disaster management. So these are some of the important solutions regarding modifying the Indus water treaty. This is a main question related to this topic. Interested aspirants can use it. With this, we have come to the end of the discussion. If you like the video, please share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to Shankar AS Academy YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.